wasn't prepared for this chat, so I will be in a winging alphabet. But I did make slides. So that, that should make up a little bit. So when I originally did this, what I wanted to do was talk about the Ruby community and why I feel so strongly about it, why I feel it's awesome. And actually, it's a little more than just the Ruby community. It's kind of like our little uh, community in the tech world, where it's kind of like Ruby and all these other little technologies like uh, we have uh, Redis and other things like that. But my focus for this chat is on Ruby, so that's where I'm on the rest of So there's a reason that Ruby is strongly associated with web development. I mean, everybody get bummed out, oh, it's just web development. Well, it's not actually what you think. In my opinion, this little fact is more subtle and profound than the obvious. So what you might think of as web development, I actually think of web development as something completely different. So what, what's going to follow is a setup and justification and my plea to all of you to become as just more involved in our wonderful Ruby community. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to talk about the benefits that we can find in the Ruby community. Um, these are all categories of benefits that I have personally seen over the last several years. And I'm going to go and briefly discuss each one of these. We're going to do a little bit of exploration on that. So the first one we'll start at the top is open source projects. Um, contributing to open source projects leads to personal growth, it leads to good opportunities, and more importantly, it leads to wonderful friendships, I mean, awesome friendships. And for us, open source projects allow us an outlet. Um, Creating with our minds is, is mostly why we get into the work we do. Uh, sometimes your mother forces you into it because programmers make more money. But in reality, we do it because we love to create awesome software. Um, so one, along with that, one of my favorite quotes is a quote from Why Lucky Stuff. And what he said yes. was, when you don't create things, you become defined by your tastes rather than your ability. Think about that. Your tastes, what do they do? They only narrow and exclude people. So create. Why Lucky Stiff, who we definitely miss. The next benefit is opportunities. Working on open source projects typically lead to various opportunities. These opportunities can be wild and wonderful. As a personal example uh, from my book, I used to work on an open source project called Merv. It was a web development framework, and I had a lot of fun with it. I was working with an awesome team, and that working with that team led me to a very great opportunity to join NGYARD uh, in application support early on. And this was because I had a really working relationship on the open source project of Merv with Ezra. Um, another example of opportunity <coughs> that Dr. Nick Williams, who I now uh, work for at Engineer Again, is early on, uh, he related the story to actually didn't know it, the beginnings of Rails itself. Uh, DHH saw Matt speak about Ruby at a conference. He absolutely loved what he saw, and he realized that he could use it to cheat up, right? <laughs> and he proceeded to use Ruby on Rails to create um, many, many opportunities for himself and others, following this awesome principle, which we know. Thanks, Ed. Um, back down to reality a little bit. Uh, most of the tasks we do are for humans. For example, tax calculation, uh, counting numbers so the government can pull money from my wallet. But government consists of humans. That's a quote, quote by Max. So, in reality, we're doing all these practical applications of the software uh, for opportunities, usually related to business, but they don't stop there. Other um, items that are like opportunities is education and mentorships. Education itself leads to personal growth. It leads to happiness. It leads to, again, opportunities, as I was just talking about. There are many uh, means of obtaining education in our community, including, but not limited to, uh, training workshops, documentation, webinars, blog posts, and if any of you have ever met uh, Sarah Allen and Sarah May, 
they run this Rails Mentors program, um, their Rails Bridge workshop, which is an outreach to teach uh, programming and technology to the broader world. And it is extremely respectful. They do a wonderful job. And it's something, something for everybody to help out with if you can. I highly recommend it. Mentorships themselves, they form wonderful relationships. These relationships often lead to sometimes opportunities, sure, but more importantly, they result in friendships. I have several outstanding friendships for mentoring. For example, last year I uh, participated in the Ruby Summer of Code uh, mentorship program. And in this program, I was paired up with this downright brilliant Aussie named Darcy Laycock. He's out uh, from Perth, Australia. He's uh, on Twitter as uh, Subtle, Subtle, something like that, and we worked together closely for several months. We were on completely opposite time schedules, but it was a wonderful experience. And to this day, I am still very good friends with him. I talk to him on a regular basis, and I couldn't be happier. Another great friendship that I felt through mentoring is uh, a good friend named Joshua Lipner. He was a business development guy who wrote his business, um, he, he did, did all of his business on, online, um, and it was done in .NET. He saw Ruby, he liked the language, he wanted to migrate from .NET to Ruby, and I mentored him through railsmentors.org on converting to Ruby on Rails, and this led to another outstanding friendship uh, where we had many learning experiences, completely non-technical related as well. So I cannot stress enough that mentorship is a wonderful thing. If you're new to, tech, to the technology, find a mentor. If you're an old, uh, old technology <coughs> or whatever, find somebody to mentor. Not only will it help the person you're mentoring, but it will help yourself a lot in more ways than just gaining technical problems. One of the things that um, kind of made me a little bit emotional was reading his final, uh, Darcy's final blog post from the Ruby Summer of Code program. And what he said on there was a lot of things, but I like this one for sure. Uh, he said, I cannot stress enough how much of an honor it has been to work with Wayne. Not only has he been very patient with me as I learned different things, but he's also taught me a hell of a lot of invaluable knowledge. Um, I also find it a little bit ironic that he signed up for the Ruby Summer of Code mentorship program and he spent the entire time working in bash shell scripting with me. <laughs> I cannot stress enough, um, as Zed said just a little bit earlier, it's not just that we're in the Ruby community, it's not that Ruby is the only language. Ruby is a wonderful language, it's a beautiful language, it's expressive, it, it just feels good. But it's not the only tool out there. It's not the only language out there. If you expand your, your set of skills, if you expand your knowledge of languages, go and embrace them. Learn different languages. Each one of them has their own strong points. Each one of them will allow you to handle situations as they arrive in your careers, in your life, and just solve them in unique and wonderful ways and more efficiently than if you only knew one language. Go out there and do that. So moving on from mentorship and education, social interaction and communication. This one's huge. Okay? We live in a world where the means and methods of communication are many and varied. I communicate personally uh, just all the time, constantly. Uh, sometimes I think I do it in my sleep too because I wake up realizing that I had said something I didn't remember saying. Um, anyways, we do this, how do we do this? We do this over IRC. We do this Twitter. We do IM, Skype, mailing lists, smoke signals. We do it all, right? Another very important one is what we're all doing right now. We're at a conference, okay? Social interaction at conferences, okay? Make sure while you're here this next couple days, meet as many people as you can. Interact with them. Everyone has their own personal stories, their own experiences. I just cannot relate enough. Every time I meet somebody else from our community, I just am blown away by the, just the myriad of background experiences and wonderful things that I've learned from them. 
So meet people next to you. Meet people at the breaks. Go to lunch with them. Talk. Explore. The means to which we communicate, they evolve over time. However, the, you know, so we got the Twitter, the IM, everything, right? Everything, the communication means evolve. But the fundamentals of how we communicate, they don't change. As Matt said in, that, in one of the quotes, let me read the quote before I left this. Imagine you are writing an email. You're in front of the computer. You are operating the computer, clicking a mouse, typing on a keyboard. But the message itself, the message will be sent to a human over the internet. So you're working before the computer, but you're working with a human behind the computer. So no matter how the communication methods or means change, there's always a human at the other end of that. Keep that in mind. We lose things like the emotional connection, the facial expressions, the hand gestures. Look at me, I'm Italian! Right? We lose all that through the, the emails. And sometimes emails, you know, you send them, you're being very serious, very straightforward, very honest, and they come across as harsh. But it's still a human on the other end. Keep that in mind. So this brings us to the next benefit of being in the community, and that is personal growth, satisfaction, and happiness. I'm going to refrain from that joke. Personal growth, satisfaction, and happiness, yes. Uh, they, they develop through friendships. Okay? These friendships are formed through the social interaction and communications that we just discussed. Ruby itself is a wonderful facilitating agent for these things. Back to Max again. As you can tell, I love quoting this guy. He's just this adorable, cute little guy, you know. Anyways. You want to enjoy life, don't you? Yes. Anyways, your job, if you get your job done quickly and your job is fun, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. Or you're smoking something pretty heavy and you think you did a good job, yes. Uh, that's the purpose of life, apparently. Your life is better because of it. Max. So, he is all about Ruby being for enjoyment of programming, the fun of programming. Don't get lost in, in the mundane. Enjoy what you're doing. And that really has a lot to say for personal satisfaction and happiness. The next benefit is relationships and friendships. A few years ago, actually it could be more than that, I don't remember anymore, I volunteered to take over the Mono project together with a group of people uh, from Zed a few years ago. Uh, this led to friendships, wonderful friendships, with uh, a couple of guys, Kirk Haynes and uh, Luis Lavena. And it, I've been friends with them to, uh, today, uh, till today, constantly interchanging with them. So again, working on the open source projects, being in the community, this builds friendships and relationships that are just wonderful. Shortly after that, I began getting heavily involved in uh, the MERB project, as I said earlier. This project itself also led to several great friendships with people like Ezra, Yehuda Katz, Matt Amanetti, and several others. <clears throat> and then more recently, I became involved in, uh, created this project called RVM, the Ruby Environment Manager. Woo. Woo and um, I created it totally selfishly because it's something I want, but I shared it with the community, well, mainly because my friend uh, Jamie Van Dyke was like very insistent that I do so. I, I, it had to even cross my mind to do so. And he's like, you gotta share this, it's all right, this is great. Okay. But, um, <clears throat> anyways, from this project alone, I, I, I've helped in just thousands of people in the IRC channel, and from helping those people, a lot of them just kind of hang around, and then I get to talking with them, I've started Skyping with them, and I've just, more and more friendships just keep arising out of these things. So all in all, contributing to open source, being in the community, it's all about the warm and fuzzy, okay? All about the warm and fuzzy. And that is Ruby's main difference from other language designs. 
Matt's tried to emphasize, he did emphasize the feeling in particular, how he felt using the language. And a lot of people lose sight of that, and, and that just makes me sad. Don't lose sight of it. Don't lose sight of the feeling, the warm and fuzzy. So, going back and recapping, these are the categories that we've just gone over. All right. We're going to look at all these benefits we discussed. If we draw lines between each of these uh, categories, as I've drawn them here in the circle, showing how they're all interconnected with each other, something beautiful emerges. And we can put on, as Jim Ware says, the robe of rose-colored glasses. So all of these are related to each other. They all interconnect. And what do you see? Well, you see a ruby, right? <laughs> um, so specifically, all these benefits we've discussed is, is a neat web, right? They're interconnected in a web, a web that forms a beautiful faceted root. So when I talk about web development, I'm talking about community development. I'm talking about Ruby development, this kind of web, not HTTP stuff. So if we uh, focus, let's focus now on that, the web itself. This, this, what is this composed of? What is this web, this many faceted Ruby composed of? It's the essence of all of those benefits in the community that we we're building up to. What is the what is the composition of this? It may seem obvious, but it, when I say this, it, it, it seems obvious. But if you stop and think about it, the fabric of our community yeah. is the Rubyists themselves. I just listed several off the top of my head, and I describe. The community at Mountain RV last year as a unique and awesome community. The reason I chose this description is due to the people in the community. That's why I described it that way. Rubyists, I find, are unique and awesome people. Every individual shares wonderful talent, experiences, knowledge. This is why I'm encouraging you to go out and just start interacting with each other. Go out and talk to somebody you don't know. Find out their story. Relate your story. Only good comes of that. I mean, examples are everywhere. I mean, for example, uh, we have the Dr. Nick Williams. The comedic genius, the energy, the intentions, the goodwill that he just harbors is just amazing. Every time I talk with him, I'm energized. I want to just jump up out of my chair and go and do something good and, and try to help people. It, it, it's, 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 he's inspiring. It's great. I love it. That's why I'm working for him now. Um, and then we have at the very top there, we have wonderful stories, anecdotes, and this is just spun by our very own ukulele playing Jim Ware, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And, um, well, of course, and then right next to that is uh, Aaron Patterson, right? <clears throat> Is his creative expression, his conveyance of concepts. If any of you have ever seen him present at a conference, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't, see it. Go online, watch the videos. They're just enjoyable. All right. And he does all of this, this, this conveyance, this miraculous talks by wearing just while well, he's like wearing, wearing spandex in a wig. You know, he looks like Captain America in spandex, or simply a green bikini. He, 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 I can remember something. So um, you also have why and mass. There, I mean, you have creative genius there, the kindness and generosity. We look at our why. He used to um, work on that project Shoes. His entire goal was to help children and young, and young kids learn programming and be able to get excited about programming because they see things happening in this shoes framework. It was, it was wonderful. Max, Ruby, I mean, come on. And then you also have uh, determination, perseverance, and sheer brilliance of people like uh, Evan Phoenix and Brian Ford. They work on the Rubinius project. And if you haven't looked at Rubinius, do so. Recently, uh, Brian Ford published on the Rubinius site a blog entitled Why Use Rubinius? 
and he gave a list of personas, and for each persona, he detailed why that person, that persona, should look into using the business. I highly recommend you read every, every one of them. They're fascinating, they're, they're interesting, and it really sheds a lot of light on the subject. And it's, and it's, and it's beyond the technical, it's not sheerly technical, it's also non-technical. So definitely go and check that out. Now obviously, these are all just the ones off the top of my head. There's thousands of this in the community, right? Possibly more at this point. I could go on and on on every one of these people here in the So, but I'm not going to get to do that because you probably get bored and all of a sudden start drooling and then your circuit boards are short out of them. Do so, I think at this point, to me at least, it's clear that we need to focus on growing our unique, awesome community. Growing a community will increase all of the benefit categories that we were discussing earlier, including the density right here of this picture, awesome individuals that we have that make up the fabric of our community. Okay? This is just because I can fit this on the screen. All of you are on this screen as well. So, in reality, what have we learned? Well, we've learned that our community is a ruby-shaped web, right? So web development should be actually about community development, and that we need to grow the community. Well, unfortunately, you can't really read this, but right outside the library, walking in, I saw this, so I took a picture of it. I guess I should have uh, tried to light it up. But this is a quote on the side of the stone right outside. And what it says is it says, culture is a pyramid to which each of us brings the stone by Wallace Stinger. I believe that's how you pronounce it. So building on the foundations of Mr. Stenger, I kind of equipped the following. Ruby is the community to which each of us brings a block. And we hear it. So anyways. So how do we grow our unique and awesome community? Besides bringing your blocks. Um, every concept that exists in our community has a certain friction to understanding, which half or hampers adoption of the concept. So what, what, what are such detriments to, that afflict people interested in becoming rubious and entering our community? We have difficult workflows. We really do. Yeah. We have difficult to acquire knowledge. RDOC as documentation. Uh, Yardoc as documentation is pretty, but you don't. Okay? You want to see a shed well, I get this. <laughs> Slow time ramping up to productivity. Is programming in Ruby very productive? Hell yes. Once you understand what you're doing. Ramping up. Takes some getting there. Mean, irritable, and ignorant people. They're there. So can we somehow measure and quantify all these? Uh, these things that I just said, the difficult workflows, difficult to acquire knowledge, slow time and productivity, and meet irritable to hear people? I'll leave that as an exercise to the reader. But how do we heal these wounds? In order to address difficult workflows, what do we do? Build tools. That's what we love doing is we're good at. For example, created RVM to address the workflow issue that I had because I, I needed all of my environments to be the same. I needed to be able to easily switch between projects without having pain in doing so, and to remember, oh, this project uses this, and I gotta have these uh, gems and make sure they're there, and all this stuff. No, let my tools handle it. I set it up once, change it when it needs changing, and the tool handles it. Build tools to handle the workflows. Similarly, uh, recently, uh, Dr. Nick got me into being interested in helping people in the Windows community come into the Ruby community as well. And he gave me a challenge. Okay, go and just try to get a Hello World Rails app up and running on Windows. Holy shit, that took me two hours. I know what the hell I'm doing. I mean, I know what I'm doing. I know all about gems, how that thing interconnects. Two hours of, you know, of Googling on Windows. Now, I, I admit, I haven't used Windows in like 10 years. Still, I'm not an idiot. Two hours. This is absolutely ridiculous. So what I did is I spent two weeks, heads down. I, I had a lot, of, a lot of help from my, my good friend that I mentioned from Mongrel, Luis Lavena, um, and I created Rails install. 
Now, somebody can download Rails Installer, do the wizard installer, and be up and playing with Rails and Ruby and SQLite, all just within minutes, however long it takes to download and install. Right? <clears throat> Minimal pain. So we create the tools to address the workflows. We're still not done yet. We still have workflow issues. Let's, let's go out and do that. How do we address uh, difficult to acquire knowledge? We write concise, clear, and plentiful documentation, and it really would not hurt if we interjected comedy and good chuckles into our documentation. And let me give you guys two takeaways of examples of this. If you have not yet, go and read the Zero MQ manual. I had tears, I was laughing so hard, it was just sheer brilliance. A second shiny example of good documentation is the Mongrel 2 manual. I highly recommend you give that a spin as well. Um, it's not generated documentation from comments and code, it's well thought out written documentation that tells the story from beginning to end so that the users, readers, they can follow the story. Okay. Be the shepherd, guide your flock. I'm all for comedy, but I think cussing is an inferior sort of humor. What's that? I'm all for comedy, but I think cussing is an inferior form of humor. I will agree with that. We don't we can do humor without cussing. I can completely agree. <clears throat> I am with you on that. I apologize for swearing. I said yes, <laughs> a little bit ago. I did not mean to offend you. He stopped listening at that point. See me after, I'll shine your shoes. Um, so, I'm almost done, bear with me. We're at the end of my talk. Um, to minimize the time and personal pro productivity, we can set up mentorships, training workshops, webinars, conferences. We do these, we need to keep doing these. This also assists with knowledge acquisition, especially with mentorships. Get involved in Rails Mentors. Uh, it's just a wonderful program. Ruby Summer Code, wonderful, I hope they do it again. And then to minimize time and personal productivity, it's, like I said, mentorships. How do we, uh, how about dealing with irritable people? That's always a fun one. And I'm actually kind of sad that he just stepped out. This starts with each of us. No, I'm not saying that he's here. No, no, I'll, give me a second. We, <laughs> we must accept a personal, it has a personal growth challenge, okay? Act as kind, patient, and persistent people to an extreme. I try to set an example of this in IRC in my channel if you've ever kind of hung out and watched. Hopefully, I am portraying that. I really try hard. Help out wherever and however you can. Believe it or not, that lesson I learned several years ago from this guy that's walking in right here. This guy went out of his way to help me. I was new, I was green. I had no clue what I was doing in, in the community or anything. And my interactions with Zed were, were just wonderful. He just went out of his way to help. All right, I went to Ruby. This car was called Ruby Fringe. And after, later on at night, he, he just sat, sat there and told me these awesome things that I could do that I didn't know I could do with like shell scripting and um, Vim. And just, it, it was great. Hey. Out of the blue, just help, right? Do that. It's very important. So now we come to the nightcap. Ooh, I mean, uh, <clears throat> yeah. I still need to um, Now we come to my original overall point, okay? And I want you guys to pay attention here. This is, if you get anything out of this talk, remember what I'm about to say, all right? This is my personal challenge to each of you. I want you to go forth. Join if you're not already in, or join more open source projects. Contribute your blocks, as we said earlier. Whether it is simply writing documentation, swear word free. <laughs> Helping people on mailing lists. Jump on IRC. Help on IRC. Okay? When you can. Go to conferences and speak about the projects. Or even help. Now notice, all these things I said, it doesn't even include development. You don't have the technical chops to, to develop on it? No problem. You can help in so many ways. It, it just 
Doing those kind of things allows the developers to actually develop. Again, more product, better, right? So, if you have the technical chops, of course, assist with development. These are all things you can do, remember? So, one thing, I used to teach at uh, Community College and the University of Buffalo, computer science and mathematics, and the biggest thing I took away from that was that you don't actually learn something until you teach it yourself, okay? Help yourself by helping others. You will learn your own material far better. You maximize your learning when you go and you teach others. Do that. Teach. Mentor. Okay? Matt's created the pro uh, Ruby for programmer happiness. To me, that is a shining example of a good user experience. That is a shining example of teaching others the way to you know, help, uh, help people. And share Ruby. Share the love. And, all right, go forth. Become missionaries for the greater tech community at large. Okay, go to PHP communities, .NET communities. Just go out. They all have awesome experience. They have awesome things to relate. Maybe you can have them bring their experiences back to our community with them. You know? Different ways of solving problems. Different mindsets. It's wonderful. So basically, that whole pay it forward thing. Do that. Find unique and interesting people to share Ruby with. Uh, share it with them, invite them into our wonderful community, invite them to become a Rubyist. And remember, the, 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 in my opinion, the true spirit of Ruby is being good, kind-hearted people, helping out with everybody, okay? It's not about money, it's not about any of that. So bring them in, welcome them, be happy, all that. Touch your feelings stuff. <laughs> so, with that, I'm done. Are we out of time? Anybody questions? Yeah, Matt, can you talk a little bit about the Google Docs and how that works? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So, it's a Google Doc that Kirk Haynes has taught me a lot. I've learned a lot from Yehuda Katz. I don't know, it's just, I, my mentors have just been random people uh, all over the internet, basically. Uh, I haven't had any one, this was my mentor. I've had a lot of, well, I was learning this, and this person taught me so, just took time out of their day to teach me so much about it. And, and that's the experience that I want to try to propagate to everybody. You know? I don't know if that answers the question or not. Uh, speaking on behalf of uh, RBM users everywhere, can I buy you a drink? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I don't actually drink alcohol, so, but I'll buy you a drink. sure we'll figure it out. <laughs> I don't need to on myself. Okay. <laughs> Do I do what? Do you do math? Math? math. math. Oh, math. <laughs> <laughs> it is a wonderful question. You know, I love actually higher mathematics, especially um, model theory, which hates me, and um, real analysis. Uh, it's, some, it's some very challenging stuff, right? And I suppose that that is a form of math that's called math. So that might count. No, I, naturally I messed up enough. Uh, back in 2002, I had to have brain surgery because uh, my brain was like squishing down my spinal column and they had to like, remove the back of my skull and all this fun stuff, right? So I, I'm going to blame that on why I am a little more bigger than that. <laughs> you know. Do you have a question? I don't have any Guinness. I don't have any Guinness. So. Now this is the same as the next finest. What are the questions?
question is, is how do I manage my time to balance it between everything I do? Because I help people on IRC, I respond to the emails, I will randomly Skype with people during the day to uh, re remote pair with them in order to help them through like their RVM setup or, or get them past an issue when they're in their own uh, shell or whatever. And I have a day job. And I also have a consulting company, uh, which I have some clients for, which she also mentioned. And I have four wonderful children and a wife. How do I manage it all? Very carefully. So I get up in the morning and I usually check my email and do a few things before then I get the kids ready for school. I, I ship them off. And then uh, I spend the day working on my day job. And then uh, at the same time, now, now I'm actually lucky. Uh, I can balance some of this because working at engineer now, um, it's not officially my job to work on RVM engineer. But they have no problem with me helping out in the channel or whatever on RVM during my work day. So I have the freedom to do that. So I do that. So all day long I'll help on RVM and uh, do my work. And then I spend three hours from five to eight every evening with my uh, family. And then once I get the kids to bed, I go back, sit down, and I either work on open source or my consulting work, depending on which you know happens to be what I'm doing at that point. And this schedule um, actually, unfortunately, tends to carry on it's weekends as well. So I'll spend like half a day on the weekends with my family, and then kind of work on RBM the rest of the time or whatever else I'm doing. Does that answer your question? <laughs> Any other questions? No. Remember what I said. Find somebody. Introduce yourselves, help them, be friendly, do it now. Do it.